How's everybody today? Good. So I know that, um, you know, bye weeks at this time in the season can be very beneficial. And I think in a lot of ways to our team, it was uh, very beneficial. Uh, I think we got lots of guys that were banged up a little bit, some rest and limited reps uh, so that they could heal up. And of course, we won't know how well that happens until we see how they respond this week. And we got a lot of good repetitions on future opponents as well as LSU, you know, in the bye week. So that should enhance, you know, our preparation, you know, for this game. So, um, you know, as I told the players when they left Thursday after practice, I wanted them to enjoy their time off, but I also wanted them to be focused and ready to go and all in when we get back because, you know, LSU is really, really good team. Um, they've probably one of the best teams in the country right now. I know they're one of, they are the best team in the country on offense. Um, we're going to need an excellent attention to detail, focus, good technical preparation in the game so that, you know, everybody plays responsibility football, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams. You know, I think this has developed into sort of a, you know, rivalry game because they're always ranked, we're always ranked. It's always a big game relative to you know, what happens in the in our division. So uh, it's an important game for, you know, both teams. I think Brian Kelly has done a phenomenal job, you know, bringing this team along, uh, the improvement that they made, the kind of team they had a year ago, as well as, you know, even a better team that they have, you know, this year uh, in terms of what they've been able to accomplish and what they've been able to do. And I think it starts with their offense. They're the number one offensive team in the country. Um, and, you know, it starts with the quarterback, Jaden Daniels. I mean, this guy's a phenomenal player. He's a dual threat player. He's a great passer. He makes lots of plays with his feet. He's fast. Um, not, not only can scramble to run, but can scramble to throw. Um, you know, they've got a really good running back in Logan Diggs. Uh, they got a good tight end in Mason Taylor. Um, you know, neighbors and Brian Thomas are really, really good receivers, but they have also other good skill guys to go with them. Their offensive line is big and physical, and they're able to create great balance on offense. Um, so it's going to be very challenging for us to be able to, you know, play the kind of disciplined football that you need to be able to play uh, and not make mistakes, tackle well in the game and be physical and try to win on the line of scrimmage, uh, which is going to be challenging defensively. You know, they are good players, uh, they're good front seven, uh, they're big, they're physical, um, and, you know, they play well together, you know, as a team. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, sometimes they've had some struggles in the secondary, uh, some guys injured and different things like that, but um, they also make a lot of big plays. Uh, they can rush, uh, they affect the quarterback, and they can cover. So. Um, this is going to be a challenge game for us from that standpoint, too. And these guys have a lot of good athletes and a lot of really good team speed, so that makes them really good on special teams. They have good specialists. So this is a really, really good team all the way around. Yeah, you talked about Jaden Daniels. You saw him a year ago. What are the biggest differences you see in his game or improvements you see in his game from a year ago, if any? Well, he killed us last year. So, I mean, guys was a really, really good player last year. He's a really, really good player now. Uh, I think, you know, overall, um, you know, they execute their offenses, you know, to perfection. Uh, and it starts with him because he makes the right reads uh, relative to runs and passes and, um, you know, zone option plays. and. Pass down plays. He's very good at reading coverages. Makes really quick decisions. Um, so uh, all those things were evident last year. I think by the way he played, and I think he's probably even better, you know, now because he has even more experience and knowledge in the offense. And they've got really good players around them. Yeah, on Daniels again. I think he had 95 rushing yards last year. You know, and a lot of it it looked like came on quarterback draws. How much emphasis is on that this year? Uh, well, actually, you know, he made a couple plays on quarterback draws, but some of them weren't designed quarterback draws. You know, two of his long runs in the game in critical situations, you know, came on bust, 
up front in terms of gap control, and he just saw it and took off running. So it looked like a quarterback draw, but I don't really think it was a design quarterback draw. They do have design quarterback draws. Um, you know, it was a zone option play that he scored on us in overtime, 25-yard run. Uh, another mistake that we made in run support uh, and adjusting the motion. So those are the kind of things that you cannot afford to make those kind of mistakes all right, when you're playing against a quarterback like this who basically, you know, is a great passer, but also have triple option type plays in the running game uh, to get him on the perimeter. And um, so athletic, you got to have the right guys trying to get him on the ground. Go to Charlie. Yeah, hey, Coach. Um, with Kendrick Law, what kind of progress have you seen from him, and what kind of versatility does he bring to this offense? Uh, you know, K Law is um, really a great competitor, really tough, physical guy. Uh, he is a little different than some of our other receivers, so uh, he does have, you know, a role uh, to play and, and does a really good job of that. He's a great special teams player, really good team guy, hard worker. Um, so, um, and I think, you know, we'll try to always have roles for him to play in the game uh, that benefit his skill set and complement the other guys that we have in the game. Uh, what has added adding Logan Diggs done for their offense this season? Yeah, well, this guy is a really good back. He's big, strong, powerful, really powerful lower body. You know, breaks tackles, good one run cut one cut runner can make you miss. Um, but this guy makes a tremendous amount of yards after contact, um, and he is physical. When you go up against a, a really mobile quarterback like Daniels, you often talk about the importance of pass rushers being disciplined and staying in rush lanes. Is there a difficult balance to draw there between doing that but also making sure guys are playing aggressive? Well, I think we want our guys to play aggressive. Um, you know, I don't think you want guys to get pushed by the pocket. I don't think you want guys to lose contain on the guy. So, you know, there's a fine line between, you know, that. I mean, if you get pushed by the pocket, we're playing with 10 guys now. Uh, if you lose contain and he gets outside, you put everybody uh, in harm's way that's trying to, you know, sort of plaster their coverage and stay with the guys they got to guard. Plus, he can take off running. So um, I guess there's a fine line between that. We've, ever, we've never, ever told guys to, to rush in their pass lanes but be cautious. Never, ever even thought of that. So we're, we're not coaching that. Coach, clearly it's a big game on Saturday, big day on Saturday. But tomorrow's a big day as well, your birthday. Do you want anything for your birthday? What are you doing? Anything different? You're just locked into the game. No, I mean, it's uh, game's the most important thing. That would be an outstanding birthday present if we could play well in this game. And so that's what I'm focused on. And that's what, you know, we're really, you know, trying to do. Um, you know, when your birthday and holidays come up in football season, they're really not holidays and they're really not birthdays. You get older, but you don't really celebrate much. We'll go to Tony on the far left. I've got kind of two. What have you seen from your own coverage unit? And then what are the challenges of facing LSU's deep passing game? And how do you guys think you can bat for that? Well, I, I think there's lots of challenges. You know, you, you got to read, run, pass, um, and they got a good play action game. They'll seven man protect and throw vertical routes. They've probably made more explosive plays running and passing than, you know, any team we played in recent times. So, um, you know, you got to guard them, you got to keep them cut off, um, and you got to be disciplined in your eye control so that you have the best opportunity to do that. Um, you know, play zone, play man play pattern match sometimes, try to mix it up. Uh, and, you know, I mean, that's the key to the drill. Uh, if you let guys get behind you, you don't get people cut off, you're probably going to give up big plays because they got a good thrower uh, and guys that can go up and get the ball. Go to road action in the middle. So what did you see out of Caden Proctor against Tennessee, and where does that competition stand at left tackle? Yeah, well, you know, Caden Proctor's getting better, uh, and I think he's – uh, learning from, you know, and gaining experience and learning. Um, what we want him to do is, you know, not worry so much about making a mistake that 
Uh, he's not playing aggressively, and that's what we've been working on with him. And you know, uh, I think he's getting better, and he's getting more confident. And I thought he played, you know, fairly well. Uh, he had a play or two that I'm sure he'd tell you, and I'd tell you, and his coach would tell you that, um, you know, we didn't execute exactly correctly. But those plays are getting fewer and fewer, and the good plays are getting greater and greater. You talked about this a little bit in your opening, but what is it about this game and these two programs that's created such good matchups, really, since you've been here at Alabama? Well, because, you know, they have really good players. Uh, they're very competitive. They've always been well coached. Um, you know, and this game has always had significance in um, the consequence of your season. Um, so the first thing you got to do is win your division. Uh, so, and that's what I'm, that we're really trying to focus on. Uh, and you got to get yourself ready to take care of business against really, really good players to be able to do that. So, um, and that, that's why I think both these teams have been ranked since 2007 or something, you know, in the top 20. So, um, and I don't know how many of the games we played with them in the last however many, 15 years or whatever, that don't have some consequence to uh, what kind of season you have. Coach, happy early birthday. You've seen many bye weeks and the results of them on the following Saturday. What is a marker to you of productive time off leading up to the game? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, you want your players, as I alluded to before, to enjoy their time off. But you also want them to be focused and ready to go when they come back. So there's a balance in all that. You know, you can't dissipate and go not eat right and do the right things while you're off. You can still enjoy yourself, uh, but you also can stay focused on um, what you need to do when you come back. And I think that's combination and balance and all that. You know, balance in life is important in about everything that you do. So um, that kind of balance can create very positive results for you when you come back and you're, you're ready to go. If you didn't think about your job, what your responsibility is, one minute, for three days, you're probably not going to benefit very much from the time you had off. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.